Hey guys, welcome to Luke's Coin Art. Today we are making a Morgan Dollar coin ring. And I'm finally doing a video on landscape mode. <laughs> so, I've got a 1921. It's an Etsy order. If you want to check me out on Etsy, it's Luke's Coin Puzzles. I don't know how to change my name yet, so. And the customer just messaged me. They want a patina finish on it. So this will be a cool ring. We're going to go for, it's going to be tails out. So it'll look a lot like uh, this guy if we can get a focus. But we're going to go for more of a kind of a rounded look. Kind of a better classic look. So let's get started. I already punched the hole in the center and sanded that out and cleaned up the inside. So that's all ready to go. So all I have to do now is take it to the heat. So let me move this up a tad bit. Hopefully that'll capture. It's not a big deal. I'm just heating the coin really. Let me grab a lighter super quick. Let me move it around. I'm never prepared for these videos. <laughs> All right. We give her about 40 seconds or so under the heat. Get it so I can start folding the metal and not have to worry about splitting or cracking. You can see the green flame starting to come off. It kind of tells me it's good. I'm going to leave my heat on. We're good to go now. So first step is uh, starting to comb this guy. So I'm going to grab a stabilizing die, which has just a little rim around it, which will hold the silver eagle in there, or a Morgan. Eagle will fit on the other side. It's a bigger coin. And since we want eagle out, double check that. Yep. I'll put heads up. So we're going to have her like that. I'm going to go with the second size medium cone. And we're going to take it to the press. Now basically I like to heat the coin each step, so that's step one. I'm going to heat this up again real quick and I'll be back. I've been doing a ton of Morgans lately so hopefully we're able to knock this one out pretty simple without any issues. That's my hopes anyways. Alright. In my mind you can never heat enough. So I'm going to go to the next size die just because the coin fits closer to the top in it. And I'm also going to move to the next size cone up. Which is this guy here. Now I'm going to the largest cone. Once it starts fitting through, I'm able to use it. I don't have far to go on this die. I'm going to actually finish it in this one here. But right now it doesn't quite fit in there without the reeds hanging over the edge. So I have to give it just a tad of a push in here. I've done these enough to know that I'm on the wrong side for one. 
that once this push rod goes right underneath the uh, die, it's ready for the next die. So right about there, we can finish it off in this guy. So the goal, first step goal is to get it to suck up to the cone, and that's where we're at right here. We have a good, good cut edge, I sanded that down really well, so that's good to go. And we have a good cone shape going. I'm trying to figure out where the focus point of this app is. Right, right where that light is. All right, so I'm gonna heat this up again real quick. I wanna see where we are as far as big size. So right now, on the smaller end, it's a size 14. We're going for an 11 and a half, so I may not even need to take this to the ring stretcher, which is great because that's when you tend to get your splitting and cracking and whatnot. So I'm going to heat this again for about 30 seconds, slam the rest of this Red Bull. And we'll finish this guy up. Might be done with the heat, so I'm going to turn it off. So this is where we're at right now. So I like to wrap it in plumber's tape very well to protect the outside detail because now we're going to have metal on metal contact on the outside of the coin. through this tape like crazy. I like to give it about 15-20 wraps. I don't want any of that detail from the coin to get warped at all, so I can't protect it enough. Now we're going to take to the Swedish dies, which are longer and I believe they're I believe they're 14 degree. I'm not sure what the degree is to them, but basically I'm going to put it in reeded side up. And we're going to push it all the way through this guy using some custom push rods that I have. I'm going to make sure you're straight. And I even like to grab some shop towel and use a layer to protect the reeded edge. size rod, grab a different point of the towel to push down. So that's as far as I can go in the Swedish wrapped first one. And you'll see that we're getting kind of close to our goal here, which for me is pushing all the tape down to where I can see the detail through the coin. And right now you can just see some of the wording on top. Focus is horrible. Maybe if I hold it further away. Anyway, you can tell there's a lot of white tape here still. So I'm going to have to go about halfway down in the next push rod or the next Swedish die to finish this up. Grab some more shop towel. Doesn't take much. You don't want to bunch it up in there or anything, or else you'll get some 
marks on your reed, especially with more pure silver. You tend to have to worry about it more with that. So we should be getting close here. You can see that now the wording is starting to come through the tape, but there's still some tape at the bottom here. This uh, makes sure that you don't have any bowing when we're done, so it's not going to be going like so. So you want to make sure that you keep going until it's flat. And at this point, we haven't even reduced the side that we measured earlier, so it should still be right around a size 13, or 14, I mean, which it is. Our end goal is an 11 and a half. And we are not going to need to take this to the ring stretcher at all. So the very last step here is to push it down just a little more on the medium size or the second Swedish die. Well, other people have other dies, so I guess it's whatever one you're using. And this will finish the Swedish die process. So I still have a tiny bit of white coming through. I haven't really messed with the size yet, so it's okay to go a little further. If I was making like a size 13 or 14 ring, I would have stretched all that. I would have had to take it to the ring stretcher before all this, so that at this point it would have already connected with the sides. But that's all we need to do there. That's far enough. You can see we're pressed down all the way. I can actually take the tape off now and see the cone shape that we kind of have going on here. I'm going to take this to the heat and we will finish this up. I want to be a little safe on this. We're still right at size 13. We haven't reduced it at all. Kind of seeing with my eye just a little bit of a flattening at the end. So before I heat this, I'm going to wrap it again real quick and just push it down a sixteenth of an inch on that push rod just to make sure that that little bowing is out. I'd hate to get all the way through and then find out I have a little issue that we could fix easily. So let's fix this issue. Again, I don't have far to push down, just like just enough to just that's fine right there. So now you can really see the detail of the coin through the tape. Well, I'm getting a horrible focus here, so. That's good, that's what we want. So that little bit helped us out. Now I can definitely see that fixed, the little issue I saw. And again, that might have moved it down a quarter of a size or something by doing that, but we're at 12 and 3 quarters right now. So the final step, I'm gonna heat this up real quick and we'll finish this up. So, get rid of my Swedish dies, kind of get this stuff back to where it goes. I'm going to wrap this again with some plumber's tape. 
Let's do that real quick on my lap. And this is the last step here. Well, other than like making it look pretty and deburring the edge and stuff. Alright, so we're wrapped back up. So now I want to find a good die to use. I'm thinking this is a good one. So I always test to see what size, how far down it sits just on the non reeded side. And that tells me I at least have to go down that far on the reeded side to make it at least equal with that side. So I start there. So I'm going to go down probably about a half inch or something to make it exactly the same spot that it was on the other side. So that's where we start. And that starts to get us the shape that we want for a ring. And this is where you start wanting to measure it to see if we're see where we're at. So right now our main goal is an 11 and a half and right now we're at a 10 and a half. With Morgans when you deburr the edge you can gain a whole nother size to it. So maybe even a size and a half. So I'm actually going to continue on until I hit probably right around at size 10 on this. So I'm going to go down a little further on this on the reeded side. Not much at all, just a tad about there. Now that same gap that's there now, we're going to turn this coin around, get it to the same point on that side, and then you should have the perfect shape on the outside of the ring that you need. So that puts us right about there. So now you can see And now we are ring shaped. We have a good shape to it. I can't believe the focus sucks so bad. But that's the shape we want. Right now the size is a 10. So now I'm going to take the deburring tool. I can get messages on here, huh? Yeah, I could have. I could have swapped it around and done it that way. I didn't know I get messages through live. That's pretty cool. Whoa. This just takes the, because uh, the reeded side never really gets stretched or manipulated, especially since it's an the ring stretcher. It's a lot thicker. So it's okay to take, and it has a big rim. So taking off that inner rim makes a better feel. I don't like that deburring tool. And it uh, also takes it down another size, size and a half, which is our goal. And again, we're not hitting any of the inside of the coin, we're just hitting that rim. Check our sizing. Right now we're at ten and three quarters. And we still got quite a bit of rim left. And again, you don't want to undersize because then you could really cut into the detail of the coin if you're hitting it with a deburring tool, but Still, we still have, you can kind of see if the focus will show up. Still some rim in there to hit. Catch your finger on it. So again, 
you could save yourself a good size, size and a half, just by deburring that inside. So we're at 11 and a quarter now. about all I want to take off now. A little bit of rim left still there. Alright, should be good. So we're right shy of 11 and a half, which is fine because I take, actually there's still, still a good lip in there. working out pretty good. I'm hoping I can actually shrink this side just a tad bit more and take off some of that rim, which I'm going to do. I'm going to wrap this again real quick. I ran out of tape. I'm noticing that if you see the reeded side still a little bit bigger than this side. It's not very noticeable, but I can notice it. So I'm just going to push that down a tad more too real quick just to make this the proper size and shape. I still have some inner rim left to remove, so I can actually shrink this down still half a size and not lose any detail. But I don't need to do that. I just need to hit it a tad. Make sure that other side's the same spot. All right, I definitely fixed it. I can tell already. Come on tape. Much better look. And it probably didn't shrink it too much. <laughs> Get off. <laughs> Get off of me. Probably didn't shrink it too much. Right at 11, so I can still take that deep bird edge. Get it down to where there's no lip on the inside. God, this has a huge rim. I've never taken it down two sizes before. There we go. Rimless. Perfect, 11 and a half. We got shape, we got the right size. I have no more. There's a tiny lip on the inside I'm trying to get rid of here. Cool. All right, take it to the sanding Dremel tool. I have a 220 grit on here. I just want to hit the inside part that I just took the uh, took the deburring tool to. Really soften that up. Again, we're not hitting the inside detail of the coin at all. We're just hitting that rim that we cut.
plane really heats up. I like to hit just the edge that I cut. Inside edge. people start lower I would too normally but I'm doing this on video I would start at around 800 grit sandpaper and work your way up to soften this edge up but I can actually do that off camera but hit the edge with some sandpaper and I'm gonna actually have to patina this off camera cuz I uh, I have all my tools somewhere. My chemicals are downstairs and everything, but um, we'll polish this up and make it nice and shiny and hopefully YouTube can capture that because it's not that good at capturing silver on camera. But here we are. We have shape we want. We have the size we want. And we have the look we want. Now we just need to really polish it. So I'm going to take some 0000, zero, zero, zero steel wool just to get rid of all the big crap. And since I have to patina it and everything, I won't hit it too hard with the polishing wheel. Actually I might not even polish it on camera. We'll probably get better results by not polishing it. We can actually see the detail. <coughs> I'll try to capture it before and after. So that's pretty much it. Let's see here. the focus point way back here and good I just cannot stand the focus I can't touch the screen to get it to focus so that's not doing me any good well you can see the shape <laughs> you can see the shape. I 
Come on. Don't focus on anything else. It's horrible. Let's see if we can polish it up, make it shiny. Oh. It's probably the worst place for this to be sitting. I thank you. I appreciate you checking out my stuff. Put a glove on here and we'll shine this bad boy up. I'm just going to shine the outside because I'm going to do patina and everything. So there's really no reason to do all this. Except for to show you how cool it looks on the outside. Once it is shined up. I'm going to move this out of my way for a second. Take it outside and take it somewhere, somewhere to focus. It's got to be able to focus on this thing. It's kind of ridiculous. Ooh, it's hot. Hot coin. Focus. <laughs> the focus sucks. Oh, Facebook and YouTube just have. Ah, that's a hot coin. Woo! Should have left the glove on. Suckers toasting. Woo! Sit. Sit coin. I got a little focus over here yesterday. <laughs> I just hate this focus. It's horrible. I won't look at my stuff. All this work and I can't even show it off. Let's go over here. Let's go in the dark. Anyway, it's a coin ring. Can't tell by looking at it. It's pretty. Can't tell by looking at it. It's done. Can't tell by looking at it. It's the closest I've gotten to a focus. Oh well, I just can't get a focus on this thing. as I can get. Thanks for checking it out guys. Check me out Luke's coin art. I'll have pictures of this posted final. Luke's coin art on Facebook. Please subscribe too if you haven't already subscribed to my videos. I'm going to be doing a lot more live videos. Probably some puzzle videos. I make coin puzzles. I make coin jars make a lot of oddball stuff um, this kind of stuff here coin jars so check me out be doing some cool stuff thanks guys